Hey everybody and welcome back to the Off The Key Podcast and we're starting the new year off with a fresh Off The Dome for you guys. I know we haven't done one of these in a while. The way I came to this topic, so I have a Channel Orange hoodie. It's, just, it's literally just the Frank Ocean Channel Orange album cover. I was at this New Year's party and I had a bunch of people come up to me and be like, wow, I love your hoodie and they'd start talking to me about music. The question I kept getting over and over again is, I'm trying to find some new music. Can you recommend me something that is like X artist. One of the examples brought up was uh, Rex Orange County. And I was like, interesting question, because, you know, sometimes it is hard to find new music, music that sounds like stuff that you already like. And navigating the world of music can already be a challenging thing to begin with. And it can be very intimidating. So today, the boys and I, James and Garrett, have decided to compile a list of ways that we find music. I'd also like to start off that there are some times where you, and it as depressing as it sounds, there are some times where you will not be able to find a similar copy, especially when it comes to like certain like voices or sounds. Like there are some times where you just will not find anyone similar. Yeah, this is more of a, uh, this is how we find music that is similar or just new music in general, because I feel yeah. like that's something a lot of people struggle with, because most people listen to, you know, what's on the radio what's popular, what's on TikTok, what's going on in the charts. Sometimes it can be hard, and honestly, finding new music can be some work. The first thing that I want to establish with this episode is finding music is going to take some work. You can't be afraid to take the deep dive and accept that you're going to find some music you don't like. But it also doesn't mean you have to give your time to push through it if you don't like it. Yeah, exactly. Plus, it's not a race. The journey that you take with music is your own. It's not about how you got there or when you got there or who you heard it from or how you heard of it. It's just that you got there at all, that you found something that you enjoy. The first step to this is you have to want to hear new music, to find new music, to listen to new music. There is this personal hang up that I've seen with people that want to listen to new music, but they... Do not accept any recommendations from any other sources, especially like people that they know or like maybe channels and you know, YouTube personalities that they know, unless they kind of discover it themselves. And I understand that music and art in general can almost feel like a piece of ourselves. Just know that when you accept this stuff, you're sharing some of yourself with that person. You know, you, you, it's the human experience. You're connecting more. So frame it like that than it is like, oh, you know, I didn't find it. You know, I don't, I don't want to intrude on this person's space or this person's world. Like, no, they're opening themselves up, you know. And a lot of people don't even realize that they're doing it. A lot of times it's a subconscious thing. You know, you'll give out a recommendation to someone, they'll just be like, oh, no. You know, or, or they'll be like, okay, and then forget about yeah, it. Yeah, just and then, forget about mm -hmm. it. And then, like, six months later, they're like, hey, check these guys out. And I'm like, yeah, I recommended them to you six months ago. You did? Speaking from personal experience. Yes, personal anecdote. That's all to say that, you know, the first step is you got to want to do it and you got to want to take the dive. So I want to go ahead and start with some pretty simple options, you know, some pretty basic things. We got quite a few things to get through here, but the first one that I do recommend to people is using the discover tab on like Spotify or the radio on Spotify for whatever artist you're listening to. Let's take Drake radio. For example, the algorithm, the search, quality of Spotify's recommendation system has gotten way better over the years. Early in like the 2010s, a lot of these sites like Pandora and Spotify, their Discover, their Shuffle, their new music tabs were really spotty. You might get a one or two new bands, but a lot of time it was just going to be throwing out the same project. Like for example, if I looked up like Radiohead and I wanted, okay, let's throw me some new artists, it would give me Radiohead, Tom York, the smile. It would give me other stuff that those members were in, but it wouldn't give me other completely separate bands that sounded alike. And it would kind of get like stuck in like the same loop. But now that those tabs and those discover tabs are a whole lot better, the net is wider and it gives you a lot more variety. Yeah, which leads me into my next point. So I discovered two of my favorite artists at the moment through Spotify radio. It was actually Fishman's. That was how I discovered Fishman's was Baby Blue came on when I was listening to like Trico or something. And I was like, holy crap, what is this? And that has started my four year obsession with this Japanese reggae dub dream pop band from the 90s. 
but also um, George Clanton, huge fan. And I actually discovered him through uh, Spotify Radio as well. I found it was um, It Makes the Babies Want to Cry off of 100% Electronica. Love that song. The album is one of his weaker albums, but still, it drove me down the rabbit hole of George Clanton and his independent label. But next, I want to highlight another piece of you know streaming services, Apple Music, Amazon Music, all that good stuff, but curated playlists. And I'm not talking about the stuff that Spotify makes, the stuff that, you know, Apple makes or Tidal or whatever streaming service you use. I'm talking about like user curated playlists. One thing I like to do when I'm looking for, you know, let, let's say I'm in like a shoegaze mood. I will literally go on the search tab on Spotify and I will type in the genre shoegaze and then I will filter by playlists and I'll scroll down and you'll find a bunch of cool mixes. Oftentimes they are community efforts. The strength of this, which is also the weakness of the streaming services in general, especially like Apple Music and Spotify, is really twofold. One is that a lot of times because of like translation issues and other things of the like, the discover tabs for world music, especially like popular genres like pop and rock in other countries and other languages won't work as efficiently as it should for like English and American centralized music. So a lot of times you won't be able to find a whole lot of music from other countries as easy as you would in America. But also sometimes they'll throw labels on things that aren't of that genre. Spotify is a big offender of this. If you go in your like songs and you click on a genre that you want it to shuffle into, like punk, I get a lot of songs that are like, nowhere close like they'll put like massive attack in that playlist they'll put you know, tame impala they'll put you know stuff like that that i wouldn't really consider punk and they'll be very liberal with some of their their, their genre their, their genre choices that's why i curated playlist these people know better than that they're not gonna put a, t- a tame impala song in a hard yeah. rock playlist they're not gonna like put that. black you know, like, keys yeah. in a shoegaze playlist you know they're not gonna put the strokes in hardcore punk you know they know better that's also why I like user curated playlists is because a lot of times the people who are making these playlists are huge fans of whatever genre you're diving into. I think it's a useful resource. And, you know, none of the methods we're talking about today are like the end all be all bulletproof. You're always going to find great new music this way. It's just you want to kind of combine all of these methods or some of these methods that we're talking about today to search and get new music. You want to use several of these at the same time to overlap because there are mm-hmm. certain things that just one device like may not cover. So you want to use multiple to cast your net wine, cover your bases, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I think another really useful resource that we can definitely, you can easily get onto is aggregate websites, like music aggregate websites. Not necessarily Metacritic. I don't like Metacritic as much for a lot of reasons. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to get into that. Stuff like All Music. And all Music. Discogs. And, and Yeah, Discogs is also a great site for reviews. Rate Your Music is one that I want to highlight in particular. Now, there is definitely a bias to the user base of Rate Your Music, but it is great for finding unknown artists. Mm-hmm. Like, lesser known artists, Rate Your Music is such a great resource, and it aggregates reviews, lists from other music sites and other critics. And one thing with RIM that I really like, and actually what I do often personally is I'll go to the Discover tab. They have a, you know, top charts tab for the year. Like you can go right now, you can go to their charts and you can check the highest rated albums of 2022 on Rate Your Music. And that's honestly a good way to catch up. And it's kind of like what you were talking about, Garrett, with filtering by the year. However, that also has an inherent weakness in that, which is another reason why you want to do multiple things at once, is that someone could have an opinion that's way different. In my opinion, you wouldn't want to look at all your music from a, oh, it has to be highly rated by everyone. You know, like Max said earlier, you can discover something that is considered to be the worst album by that person, but it just may have a song or a sound or, hey, you might think that the album is a 10 and disagree with everyone else. That might draw you into it. Like, imagine if you would have saw that, you know, George Clanton album and everyone gave it like a five or just an average score. You might have skipped over it otherwise than bring into it naturally. That would be the the weakness of that particular 
yeah, methods. You know, review aggregate sites. But also what I think it's really useful for is seeing what the discourse is for current yeah. music right now for like certain circles. Honestly, Black Country New Road, Rate Your Music loves that band and other bands like it. So, yeah, I mean, you can see the bias, but also like if everyone's talking about it, you know, maybe, maybe there's something to it. One thing I always stress with reviews, I view reviews as one of two things. I view it as a buyer's guide and I view it as a discussion piece. So when I see, you know, the needle drop or spectrum pulse or fucking, I don't know, pitchfork or something, give a review. I don't take that as gospel. I try to see what they say and see if maybe there are some key points that I resonate with that I like, Oh, maybe I might like this album. Like they might mention something like, Oh, this has a really strong, like classic punk sound or something like that. That might resonate with me and it might convince me to check it out. On another note, uh, what I mean by discussion piece is like, sometimes it's really interesting to form your own opinion. I love doing this. Like I'll listen to a record before any reviews come out and I'll form my own opinion and then I'll see how that clashes with someone else's opinion or a, a critic's opinion or, you know, a review outlet that might make me see the album in a different perspective. And that's the beauty of music discourse. Very but. stimulating. Now, this isn't the most surefire bulletproof way, but I do think this is a very useful resource if you just want to catch up on a bunch of stuff, year-end lists from outlets, critics, and, you know, best albums list. I know everyone complains about it, but let's take the, you know, the Rolling Stones top 500 best albums of all time list. Now, you may not agree with all the picks on there, but there might be some really good music that you can find on that list. And a lot of what we've talked about so far is uh, basically using the internet or some form of media. And I just want to also point out that if you have a passion for music, it would behoove you to surround yourself with other people that also share that passion. Other people, word of mouth, is a very, very good way to discover new music. It can't be discounted. I can speak from personal experience. These two guys have helped me discover a lot of new music over these past four years since I've known them, really. It is absolutely important to surround yourself with people that share your passion 100 percent, and uh that actually leads into another point i was gonna have immerse yourself in the local music scene in the inverse of that if you surround yourself with a lot of people that don't really listen to music or just you know flip on the radio and flip it off and don't really listen to music in their free time not only that they don't use it as like a hobby but they don't really have a diverse music taste and you can't really talk about music with them at least in my own experience it'll kind of lessen your interest in really exploring new stuff when you talk about hey this is what i've listened to and they're just like okay cool a bunch of like non-music listeners because as as wild as that sounds to someone that's really into music i mean there's no one that i've met that just like doesn't listen to music at all there's a lot of people that if it didn't like come on on the radio or they didn't listen to it while they're walking through walmart if it wasn't already in their other media they just wouldn't listen to music on their own at all and if you're around like a bunch of people like that, it kind of wears off on you. You'll do what you're surrounded by, more or less. They have to share your passion with music. Yeah, if you want to feed that. Yes. Yeah, if you want to nurture it and feed it. And that's going into the local music scenes come into play. You know, I'm not the best about this, but going to local shows, mm -hmm. finding out about artists in your area that you may not have ever heard about. There is a certain sense of community in that. You'll Absolutely. oftentimes find people who are just as passionate, if more passionate than you about music, that can recommend you some wild stuff. And I would also recommend on that point too, not only f people that share your passion, but also people that might have a completely different music taste from you. Even though you may not always agree with them or you may not always like the stuff that they listen to, it's very important to get a broader understanding of what is going on out in the world. They can really open doors that you just didn't even know existed and that will definitely happen if you go out to the local music scenes because you'll definitely meet a lot of musicians and especially if you're a musician yourself going to your local scene is kind of a necessity on that point i also want to bring up something that i feel like doesn't get highlighted enough when it comes to music discovery but following labels either local labels indie labels mm -hmm. even major labels following labels can sometimes put you on to some really cool stuff yeah, because I just kind of looked at labels as personal social connections and just, oh, we buy and distribute the music. And there was nothing more to that. I didn't, for the longest time, I didn't really see labels as 
cultivating a certain genre or sound or like style almost you know? exclusively, mm-hmm. which that happens way more than I ever knew oh, yeah. or figured that it would. Yeah, and to kind of bring back uh, the George Clanton point, 100% Electronica is his own personal indie label, and I have followed a lot of artists from that group. I mean, Caroline Loveglow, um, Negative Gemini, George Clanton himself, Death's Dynamic Shroud, Vapor Ore. Like, I have found a ton of Vaporwave-esque, you know, electronic artists that I really enjoy through just following George's label. Or even, like, let's take Stone's Throw, for example. That's the label that had Mad Lib, MF Doom... If I wanted to listen to some MF Doom or something like similar, I I might hop on like Stone's Throw or, you know, whatever label he was on at the time and see like what's going on. Because the guys who sign these artists to that label, they sign them for a reason. And exactly. sometimes it's because they want to cultivate a certain genre or like group of artists that all ha- kind of have a similar, you know, modus operandi. The only time that like wouldn't really work is like a huge record company like, like you know, RCA or, yeah, or like Atlantic. Jam. Columbia, where they just like there's so many different artists from like all walks. You know, they're they're not really cultivating sound. They just want like the big hitters to come yeah, in and hot. make them some money. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, another good way, music related YouTube channels, man. Oh yeah, like, that that actually segues beautifully into yeah. my next point. Not only like the music critics and stuff like Ventano and educational guys like Rick Beato and stuff, but channels that are centered on a certain type of instrument or something like Drumio is a great great youtube channel i'd highly recommend especially if you're a drummer i've discovered some music from them just listening to them talk about drummers or like have guest drummers on from other bands yeah exactly and guest drummers much like any other other musician will literally just name off bands and drummers that they listen to oftentimes they'll list drummers that influence them and you can look up that drummer and find bands that they played for and from one artist from one musician you can find like several different bands in that similar vein, there's a lot of artists that will do covers of songs that I like, and then I'll find out that they do another cover of similar songs. Like, there's this one one artist, one bass player that I found that the YouTube algorithm just randomly shot my way one day, and it was a medley compilation of King Crimson bass covers. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Let me watch this. And then I found out that they did another compilation of Radiohead bass covers, like 30 or 40 Radiohead bass covers, and it was just like a medley. And then they did another prog band. I can't. I think it was like Rush or maybe Yes or something. And I was like, wait a minute. This is literally like all bands that I listened to. And then, but then they had some, then I click on their channel, but then they had some stuff that I just did not know what it was. So then I watched those bass covers, and I was like, wait a minute. This sounds very similar. I like this too. And then just, you know, so on and so forth. Oh, yeah. And not to mention like live performance channels, you know, like NPR Tiny Desk. I love mm-hmm. Tiny Desk. You know, I know sometimes they get some artists that I don't care about, but Tiny Desk is such a great way to introduce yourself to new artists or even like colors. I don't know if you guys have ever watched colors, but um, I haven't, no. Yeah. No. Color Show. It's basically they'll get an artist on to do a uh, live cover in a very, like, intimate setting, you know, it'll just be a mic hanging down, maybe a guitar, and them. Or even, like, KEXP. Great, great, great live performance channel. I know we've talked a little bit about this before, but kind of like BBC Radio 1, a lot Mm -hmm. of these channels will bring an artist on and have them just record a set, a live set. I also want to make, like, a a short public service announcement. Whether you like... Any of the bands that have ever done a Tiny Desk performance or a From the Basement performance, I don't care if you just dislike every single artist that's ever done one, do yourself a favor, listen to a Tiny Desk and listen to a From the Basement entire show. You will enjoy it. It will yep. make you want to search it out. The quality is so good. It's stupid good. Absolutely. And it's also a good way of seeing another side of an artist that you already know or enjoy. T-Pain is a really good example of this, actually, because everyone knows T-Pain as being, you know, the auto-tune guy. He uses all over his music, but you go to the NPR Tiny Desk concert, you find out T-Pain, he can actually sing. <laughs> That's like when Gnarls Barkley, when CeeLo Green and Danger Mouse did their From the Basement sessions, they were so stripped down with stringed instruments and, like, soft choir vocals in the background. It almost sounded like a completely different band. It really did. Yeah, it's a great way to find a new appreciation for an artist you already know or an artist you're not that familiar with. Yeah, and I can I, I want to highlight KEXP in particular because I've actually found a lot of 
Latin American artists through KEXP. I found Krungbin personally and King Gizzard. Yeah, that's actually how I discovered Silvana Estrada. Also, uh, Mendo Mokhtar, this crazy African guitarist through KEXP. And I did just want to like go down the list and highlight some of these channels so we're not just, oh, yeah, go listen to this stuff, and then we don't point you in a direction. So I'm just going to yeah. go ahead and list them off real quick, some, some performance, live performance channels that I recommend. But NPR Tiny Desk, From the Basement, BBC Radio 1, KEXP, A Color Show, Triple J, some great live cover channels. Now, to stick on YouTube, I also want to talk about some review channels that I really enjoy. They're not all just like review channels strictly, but obviously the melon, the vegan myth himself, the best teeth in the game, the needle drop. Now, I don't always agree with him. Actually, I disagree with him a lot, but the needle drop is great for honestly keeping up with what's hot right now. And as opinionated as the guy is, he does get people paying attention. Mm -hmm. And his videos are very digestible and all of the channels that have inspired by him, the music pops up, it'll tell you a little bit about it. And it's not this hour long deep. I mean, they'll have yeah. those videos, but it'll be digestible. And, and yeah, he'll keep it real concise. He'll go through the bullet points, what he likes about it, what he doesn't. Bam. Gets you the rating. That's it. You know, another under, really underrated group of channels, the people that do, what was this guy doing on guitar during this song? Or like, have you ever seen those music like, analysis? Like, those videos. like vocal coach watches. Oh yeah, this the, performance like on, the react. You know. They're basically like react videos, but actual professionals yeah. reacting to music, oftentimes that they've never heard. Like, I actually do watch one of those. There's one. It's called the Charismatic Voice, and it's is he charismatic? No, she actually. Oh. She is a classically trained opera singer, and she reacts to a lot of popular music. She's done a lot of rock and metal and stuff. That's a great way to discover new things or hear things in a different way. Or just, It's also really interesting to hear what a professional, classically trained musician thinks of us lowly popular music nerds here. One thing I love about review channels like that is they'll turn you on to some music that you may not have discovered otherwise. Yes. Like, I've found a lot of artists through Spectrum Pulse, which is one of my personal favorite music channels in general. He'll introduce me to some wild, obscure stuff that I would have never gone out of my way to hear. Like, I had a couple of country records on my year-end list for 2022, and it, I found them basically because of him. Shout out Spectrum Pulse. Love that guy. Don't always agree with him, but he's got a good taste. What about those hip-hop channels that you like to... Oh, yeah. And there's also, I know I've talked about them before at length. They actually inspired kind of my idea for this channel, but Dead End Hip Hop is a great, great hip hop channel. They talk about pretty much anything rap, hip hop related, um, and they format every episode as an open conversation. Like it is a review, but it's also just some dudes who love rap sitting around a round table and talking about an album. And it's great. You should definitely check them out. I have been an avid watcher of them for probably about seven years now, and uh, they do great stuff. And there's also the more sort of education-oriented channels like Rick Beato. He talks about a lot of things more in-depth. He's a former music producer and teacher, so he knows a lot about music theory and real deep dive, like underwater part of the iceberg. Yeah, parts very, of music. very, very knowledgeable guy on yeah. the industry. It's not quite as, I will say it's not quite as digestible as like the Needle Drop or some of these other channels, but it's definitely really interesting to see how he analyzes music and what new things you can hear if you train your ear to listen for them in music. Like one of the most ubiquitous songs of all time, More Than a Feeling by Boston. Watching his analysis of that song made me appreciate it way, way more than I ever did before because he has Pro Tools and he'll divide the tracks and everything and separate and so you can listen to ISO tracks of different parts of the song. He showed me how many layers to that song there were and I hear things now in that song that I never heard or noticed before. It's a very, very good way to learn more about music and also appreciate music you love even more and also discover new music as well yeah i will say he does have a little bit of a, a old man bias but he it, does yes. ev every every reviewer every critic i don't care who it is whoever you run into they are going to be biased oh, we're yeah. we're biased yeah the needle drops bias any reviewer you run into is going to be biased in every some human being before. on planet earth yeah 
Yeah. I mean, and and keep that in mind, you know, always take reviews with a grain of salt, but it's a good baseline. It's a good reference point. You know, I, I'd even say that about our channel. But anyway, I just wanted to highlight a couple more names before we move on to the next point. Deep Cuts is one of my favorite music channels on YouTube, period. I hate that he doesn't do more, but this guy is super knowledgeable on music, and he has this series that I used to love to death, and that got me into a lot of music, but it was five albums to get you into blank genre. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing this guy. He this guy is great. He will introduce you to some really interesting stuff. He's actually how I got into Afrobeat, funk, a lot of different genres that I would have never even thought of. Post-metal? Who listens to post-metal? But yeah, and he'll have these like essential segments where he talks about his favorite albums of all time and break them down. Kind of similar to like Rick Beato, mm -hmm. where he'll break it down from like you know, a more technical perspective, but also from a personal and emotional standpoint and how that works together. But yeah, great channel. Highly recommend. He doesn't upload a lot anymore, but if you want some great album genre deep dives, go watch Deep Cuts. Now, another one that I wanted to recommend is this guy's a little more on the jokey meme side, but I, I like his stuff. Uh, Rough Criminal. He does. 10 second reviews. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this, I remember him. <laughs> so, Rough Criminal is great. He'll give you the most Cliff Notes of Cliff Notes version of an album review. It is literally 10 seconds. Every and it single is, video. Is and it seconds. is almost always dead on. It's kind of a gimmick, but I have actually went and checked out albums because of his 10 second reviews. It's like a bullet TikTok surefire way to just get an album review out really fast. That's what we're going to make all our content. All our album reviews from now on. <laughs> but yeah, I won't go too deep, but there's a couple more channels I recommend. Uh, Volksgeist, he'll do history videos on certain artists, like the story of Frank Ocean, the story of 21 Savage, stuff like that. Very big in hip-hop. Cool guy. Check him out. That is also a really good way to get introduced into stuff, especially if you are... Two examples I can think of is that one where you, if you're into history, you stimulate that side of your brain while learning about music. Or if you hear songs in like a piece of media you like, like a movie or play video games, you kind of get that side. So you're not just looking for new music in, in that vein. You're also stimulating your other interests as well. So that could be, that can not only help you, but it kind of increases your enjoyment a little bit more because you're like, oh, I'm. Yeah, I'm learning you know, the background history, and I'm you know learning about new music at the same time. Quick aside, playing Grand Theft Auto is also a good way to discover new music. Bro, for real, <laughs> GTA Five. Honestly, Radio, <laughs> GTA Five Radio, honestly, I think has the most songs. It has it. Be it has hard one of the most like curated game playlists. Yeah. I've seen Spotify playlists that are a whole lot shorter than GTA's collective radio. Yeah, Rockstar did a pretty good job handling their music. Last channel I want to highlight. One that I really enjoy and is great for like pop music is Todd in the Shadows. He'll do like pop song reviews. Either he will clown the shit out of them or praise them. He'll do these like segments. He did a retrospective on the worst Clash album, which was, was it Crap It Out? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have tracks. Yeah, Crap It Out. He did a retrospective on that and that was super funny and super entertaining and actually very educational. But he'll go over pop songs like What's Big Right Now. His top 10 worst songs of 2022, that was good. But yeah, recommend that channel, especially if you want to like keep an eye out on like pop music. And he breaks down like why pop music works and why it doesn't. What makes it bad, what makes it work. Very entertaining channel. Now I kind of wanted to move on to some more, some less helpful but more specific options. One thing that I like to do personally when I'm discovering new music is if it's a genre that I'm interested in, I'll pin the band, you know, that I liked. Let's take Dream Pop, for example. I got into Dream Pop through Beach House, and I said, well, why don't I work backwards and see everything that came before it? So what I would do is I'd hop on, like, Wikipedia or something like that. I'd click on Dream Pop, and I'd look at all of the artists associated, like, notable artists associated with that genre on a place like Wikipedia. Or location, too. Yeah. When I first listened to Tame Impala and songs of the like, I looked at the subgenre, and when I tried to dive into the genre, I was getting a lot of very 
psych pop. I was getting a lot more pop than I wanted, and I wanted I wanted rock. I want it more specific. I want that psychedelic rock. And then I found out that there was something that all these bands that I did like had in common. They were all from Australia. So then I was like Australian psychedelic, and then that was like that the was, gates opened. To this day, that is the deepest subgenre dive that I've ever had. I mean, I had new mm-hmm. artists and music for just two solid weeks. It was just. It was like an all-you-can-eat buffet. I was, it was just Spotify was just like keeping it coming. So sometimes looking at like where the scene is can be very helpful as yeah. well. I mean, another great example would be the DC hardcore punk scene. Oh, yes. DC was legendary in the world of hardcore punk, and you had art- artists like Minor Threat. I mean, the entire Discord Records label, Ian McKay's label, was based in DC. Seattle for 90s hard rock, like Bristol in the UK for the 90s trip hop and electronica. You can... There's a lot. New of, York hip hop. Yeah. You know, West Coast hip hop, you know, things like that. Honestly, sometimes the location also has a lot to do with the style of whatever music you're listening to. To your point about working backwards, that's also a great way to discover roots music. Yeah. The origin of these genres and stuff. And sometimes when you go back to the origin of a genre, you find another genre that may have birthed this genre or at least influenced it or led to its birth yeah exactly and that's a good way to catch up and understand where the music you're listening to today how it got here and it's also a really good way to experience music history because i feel like you know oftentimes like yeah you can you know talk about an artist blah blah blah, all all day all you want but you don't really feel it until that time period until you've listened to the artist Now, I did want to take a step back to YouTube for a second, but one thing that I really love to do for Asian music in particular, there are a lot of mixtape channels that I really like. Now, of course, we're going to link all this stuff in the description, but I wanted to highlight a couple. My favorite mixtape channel for like Japanese music is called Tardio Obscurus, and he'll make these very specific mood mixtapes with Japanese music. And even that can be helpful for finding a certain style you want, like a mood mixtape. And there's also Hasoyi, also a great one. They'll do like pop mixtapes. They'll do Spanish mixtapes, Japanese mixtapes, all kind of stuff. And it's a good way to turn you out yourself onto music that you probably wouldn't find otherwise. You know, mixtapes, playlists, they, they're kind of synonymous at this point. They can also be hit or miss. I found some good stuff that way. It's actually how I discovered a really, really fun band from Japan called Sunny Day Service was through a Tardio Obscurus mixtape. And I listen to them a lot now. I believe I found a playlist on Spotify. It was called, it was very specific like that. It was, it was called <laughs> Japanese rock songs that sound like they're from an anime but really aren't. It was someone's personal <laughs> playlist they made. And I actually <laughs> discovered a few songs that I really liked from that playlist. Yeah, sometimes you got to dig through the weeds is what we're trying to say. Yeah. Another thing that I wanted to highlight, and I actually think is a very useful resource for finding new music, is Reddit. Listen, I know. I can hear you groaning already. Uh... Rolling your eyes. But if you use Reddit to find new music, it can be a great resource. There's our jazz. There's our funk. There's our hip hop. A really great subreddit that I like to go to is called R Listen to This, where Somebody will just make a post and be like, hey, check this out. Oh, this obscure IDM dance track. Oh, check out this rapper from Baltimore that has like 12 followers on Spotify. But this is actually really good. Yeah. You know, sometimes finding a subreddit or a forum of a specific thing that you enjoy can lead you to find some really good stuff because you'll be surrounded by fellow enthusiasts. Exactly. That was always the spirit of Reddit. And I understand that it has become a meme at this point. Reddit is definitely a great great site for learning about all kinds of things if you know how to use it right the list is running a little low here but i did want to highlight one last thing that i actually just discovered and it's very cool it's called music map so you type in an artist into the search bar and it maps out artists that are similar to that one based on discourse in the own forum for music map or online discourse from google reddit 4chan all of these different places, and it'll map it out, quite literally. This is a random thing I discovered while I was doing research for this video, but check it out. It's very cool. I actually found a couple of artists through that today. But anyway, I think we've about covered it. I feel like we've given you a pretty decent breadth of ideas 
of ways to discover music. It all comes down to, you know, you got to have a passion for it and you got to be prepared to jump in. Just take the dive and explore new music. Yeah, you've got to want to put in the effort. And some people, there's nothing that pisses me off in the argument that there's no good music out there these days and there's no the, the old boomer take that is a bunch of hogwash yeah that is a bunch mm-hmm. of crap it's a bunch of garbage i mean is it harder to find sometimes yeah but also it isn't it really isn't like if you actually are putting in the effort to find new music that is stimulating that is exciting that is cutting edge there's tons of it out there there's an abundance there's an overabundance of it honestly you can find good music out there even the people we're criticizing now, they can find good music out there if they just look for it. But that's the key thing is you got to want to look for it. It really is just in life. If you want something, you got to want to put in a little work. Nothing is just going to fall in your lap most of the time. Um, but anyway, any final thoughts, guys? Any other ideas or things that you guys have for the listener here? Covered it pretty much. Yeah, I'm all good. All right. With that being said, this is Off the Key Podcast with Off the Dome, and we're out of here. Thanks, you guys. here and i just wanted to give a shout out to le crembo for the intro and outro music also check out our link tree for where to follow us we are on instagram and facebook and a variety of streaming platforms and if you could give us a sub or a listen or even a follow it'd be greatly appreciated thanks guys see you later